Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena and I bring you today's word for September 14th, 2018. I'm teaching a series entitled Standing on a Word from God, where you get a word from God. We're supposed to live, Matthew 4 and 4. Jesus said, not by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God for us. And we got to stand on that word and live by that word and believe that God's word is going to come to pass in our lives. This is start part 13 of the series. I'm, t- I'm calling this the space between the promise and the performance. There's a space between the promise and the performance. And in that space, we must continue to believe God. We've been looking at the story of Abraham. Let's go back to the story this morning. So I want to read for you Genesis 21 verses 1 through 7 from the easy to read version. This is what the Bible says. The Lord came back to visit Sarah as he said he would. And he kept his promise to her. At exactly the time God said it would happen, Sarah became pregnant. She gave birth to a son for Abraham in his old age. Abraham named the boy Isaac. Abraham did what God commanded and circumcised Isaac when he was eight days old. Now, Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac was born. Sarah said, God has made me happy. And everyone who hears about this will be happy with me. No one thought that I, Sarah, would be able to have Abraham's child. But I have given Abraham a son, even though he is old. All right, so I think it's funny, before I get into the message, that Sarah keeps calling him old like she wasn't old. She was 90 years old, by the way. But anyway, she was happy that she finally had that baby. She was giddy. She was 90 years old. She's holding a baby. She's like, I finally gave my husband a baby after all of these years. In chapter 21, we see the birth of the promised son. The promise finally came to pass in chapter 21. Uh, And so that's what I'm going to deal with today because he got the promise in chapter 18. So there was this long space between the promise and the performance. We're going to deal with it on on this Friday morning so we could seek to close out the week strong and then head into the weekend strong. You ready? Let's get into the word. So what what does this mean to you today? Open up your heart now to hear what I'm about to say, what God is about to say through me. So while I'm speaking, there will be words behind my words. There will be a voice behind my voice. And as you open up your heart to God, you'll be able to hear what he is saying to you specifically for this day and for this weekend. So as I release it, you open up and receive it. You ready? Two things. Number one, there is a space between the promise and the performance of the promise, right? Uh, So the promise came in chapter 12. The baby was born in chapter 21. Now we read that, it was like, okay, well, there's a span of nine chapters, but in that span of nine chapters, there's also a span of 25 years, (laughs) 25 years. Now I've been walking with God for 23 years and there's some things I've been believing God for for 23 years. So I can somewhat relate, but I mean, they waited on this promise for 25 years. Five years now think about that for a moment because you know you might be re- reading nine chapters you don't really kind of think about how long that took it took them 25 years so let that sink in 25 years is a long time it's always great when God gives you a promise in the morning and he manifests the promise in the afternoon man that's good right or if God tells you something on Monday and by the end of the week you already have it that's that's a blessing but my experience has been that for the most part, those occasions are very rare. Most of the time, there's a space between the promise and the performance. And what we have to do is we have to continue to believe God in that space. And, and, and we're going to learn here that, that the enemy will crank up the pressure on you in that space. And then you have to continue to believe God no matter how long it takes. My question for you this morning, on this Friday morning, as we close out the week, is think about some of the promises God has made over your life. And think about some of the things that you you claim to be believing God for. Are you really believing? I mean, do you really still believe that those things are going to come to pass? I know that it's been a long space between the promise and the performance, but have you relaxed the grip that you have on your faith? Have you thrown in the towel? Have you stopped believing? Have you kind of dismissed uh, your destiny or dismissed God's assignment or dismissed God's call just because it took so long? Yeah, maybe it's been 25 days. For them, it was 25 years. Maybe it's been 25 weeks. For them, it's 25 years and it still came to pass. You have to continue to believe God. During the 25 years between the promise and the performance, God reiterated the promise to Abraham many times. He had to. 
to, to help Abraham keep believing. God reassured him many times. God will come to him and say, no, you are a father of many nations. God will come to him and say, no, I'm going to do this thing. Look up at the stars. <laughs> That's how many kids you're going to have. Look down at the sand. That's how many kids you're going to have. I mean, God was reassuring him that, listen, son, I'm with you. I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. And, I, and I'm telling you, I, I, know how, I know how difficult this is. When you're like, God, what's wrong? I mean, my God, I've been waiting on this thing for so long. What is going on? I'm doing. I, I told you yesterday that a promise from God is it, it is a revelation of, of divine intention that is that is released so that you can uh, so that it can inspire your faith and your actions and you're like yeah I'm doing I'm doing what I believe you want me to do so that I can see the manifestation of the promise I'm doing this I'm doing that I'm believing you I'm praying I'm fasting I'm sowing I, I'm, I'm calling I'm I, I'm I'm resting I, I don't know what how why is this taking so long was well, you know the truth is I know we don't like to talk about this but the truth is that sometimes you did nothing wrong. It's just that God's promises come in the fullness of, of his time, in the fullness of time. There's some things that, that cannot manifest before their time because if they manifest it, there's a lot of things that have to happen. Maybe you did nothing wrong, but, but there are other conditions that have to be set and other conditions that have to be met. So there are other people that gotta be ready, not just you. There are other conditions that have to be ready, not just your home. So slow down, calm down, son. Calm down, daughter, it's okay. It's going to come to pass. He kept reassuring him, you got, you're going to be a father of many nations. And then last thing I'll say about this first point is that here's another, another little ugly truth that we don't like to talk about. Sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. Sometimes, you know, things will seemingly get worse before they get better. And it is because remember, you know, what God said in the Old Testament, that he's a jealous God. He doesn't want any other gods before him. Well, God still wants all the glory. We serve a God that wants all the glory. Now, God will allow you to have the benefits Thank you, Jesus, for the benefits, but he wants the glory. When God promotes you, when he exalts you, when there's a ceremony and everybody shows up and your name is on the program and everybody's there to see you, God is waiting to see what you're going to say. You need to open up your mouth while the spotlight is on you and deflect that glory right back to him. You give him the glory. You accept the benefits. Our God is a jealous God. Do not take his glory. Do not take credit for what he did. So God will sometimes allow a situation to get so bad that when he does it, nobody can take his glory. So now at that point, you have to, people have to say that was God because it couldn't have been nobody else. So maybe when he was 75 and she was 65, if they would have the, the baby back then, people would have been like, oh, okay, that was old. But, you know, that sometimes happens, I guess. But no, 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 no. God waited until he was 100 and she was 90 so that there's no confusion, so that this was all God. And, and so, yes, God will wait till the situation gets so bad that where he will get maximum glory out of the situation. Sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. Last thing I'll say is Abraham continued to believe God. He, he continued to believe that he was going to be a father of many nations. And he did this without a Bible to read, without a pastor to listen to, to keep him encouraged, without a choir to sing him happy, without a fellow believer to keep him encouraged. He believed God. He believed in a God that he could not see. And he believed that this God that he could not see what manifest in his life in a way that he could see. He continued to believe God. And 25 years later, when he was 100 years old, when his wife was 90 years old, the Bible says that he considered not the deadness of his body, nor did he consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. He continued to believe God. He, he believed that God was able to do what he said he would do. And that's how we're supposed to live. We are believers and not doubters. We walk by faith and not by fear. We have to believe God for that in the space between the promise and the performance and it shall come to pass. Number two, and finally, I only have two points this morning. Number two, you must hold on until you see what God said. You must hold on until you see what God said. You must live in expectation, glory to God, of manifestation until you see what God said. In the space between the promise and the performance, the devil is going to come. He's going to try to stir up problems. In the space between the confession and the completion, the devil is going to try to stir up confusion. And in that space, the, the devil will crank up the heat on you, but you, got, you have to continue to believe God. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, listen, Mr. King, we're not going to bow. I, I tell you what, you could, you could do whatever you want. You could kill us if you want, but even if you do, our God is able. Even if he doesn't do it, we're still not going to bow. And, 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 and the, the king said, well, crank up the heat seven times hotter. The devil will crank up the heat on you to try to get you to buckle, to try to get you to bend, to try to get you to fold. But you have to continue to believe God. It doesn't matter how high he cranks up the heat. You are a believer and you must believe that God will do what he said he would do in your life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18, the Bible says that we go in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 7 says we walk by faith and not by sight 
in chapter 4 and 18, Paul was telling us that there's an unseen realm and then there's a seen realm. And the unseen realm is permanent. It is not subject to change because in eternity, it's already done. The seen realm is temporary. It is subject to change. Down here in this world, things change. Things fluctuate. We live in times and seasons. But Paul was saying we're supposed to live by what we see in the unseen, not by what we see in the seen. When the unseen becomes more real to you than the seen, what, what God revealed to you becomes more real to you than what you're dealing with right now in your present situation, then you are able to walk by faith and not by sight. You are not moved by what happens. You are not moved by what people say. You are not moved by what came in the mail. You are not moved by an email or a text message. You are only moved by God and you're believing God and you're standing on the promises of God. And yes, there's a space between the promise and the performance, but in that space, you're going to continue to believe God because you're not moved. You are you are spending more time meditating what God said and, and you're, you're in sync with heaven and, and you, you are in sync with heaven even if it means that you seem out of sync with the people down here in this world. It's just that this world and, these, and the people down here haven't caught up with the revelation or the reality of what God has already spoken over your life and you are believing God and you're living in, in sync with that reality and you know that down here things will catch up eventually but you are going to live by faith and not by sight. You are living by every promise. I'm going to close with the words of Moses. Moses said this in Numbers 23 and 19. God is not a man. He is not given to lies. He is not the son of man that he's going to change his mind. If God said it, if he will perform it, if God promised it, then he will make it good. We serve a God that gives us promises and, and his name is on the line. And God will never allow his name to be tarnished. If God said it, he will perform it. If he promised it, then he will make his word good in your life. But you must hold on in the space between the promise and the performance, and it shall come to pass. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to repeat after me now in faith from a believing heart. Man, I was preaching this morning. Glory to God. Say this. Say, Father, this is a season of expectation for me. I believe you. I believe every promise you have ever spoken over me shall come to pass. For you, Father, in heaven, it's already done. For me, Father, in the earth, it's only a matter of time. So I, I choose to live by what you reveal to me from the unseen realm and not by what I see down here in this world. I live in sync with heaven, even if it means that I seem out of sync with the people down here. I walk by faith and not by sight. I hold on no matter how long it takes so I can see in my hands what you've already revealed to me in my heart. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Come on, please apply this one and prosper. Live by what God said, not by what you see. And then you open up your mouth and say what God said. And don't allow what you see down here to change what you said. You have to live by a different reality, by what God reveals and not by what's happening down here in this world. This stuff will change. What God said will never change. Hold on. <laughs> in that space between the promise and the performance. It's a Friday morning as you head into this week. Uh, weekend, as you close out the week and head into this weekend, I just want to remind you, we have a website, ripministries.org, ripministries.org, uh, and the, the blog is todaysword.org. On ripministries.org, you can go there, you can look at, there's a bunch of stuff going on in the ministry, there's all types of free content, we have a podcast, go to the iTunes podcast, and just search for Rick Pena, and you're going to see the Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries podcast. So we have several in there, but we have this new one that just says podcast and there are hundreds of messages in there and everything is free. And so we're sharing this with you. We want you. We have an app. Go to any app store, search for Rick Pena, download the Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries app, get it on your phone, on your tablet, on your mobile device, whatever. Just get the word. Everything we put out there is to be a blessing to you. We love you. God loves you. You walk in the blessing today and this weekend. And before you leave the screen, please share this message with someone that you know. God bless you.